We're back everyone, it's win one take one. Today we're taking on Chelsea and we are also taking on Bolton. A chance perhaps to gain a player or two. Hopefully we're going to be able to do that. If you're enjoying the series, smack a like on the button. A like on the button. Smack smack the like button. I don't, you can tell I don't ask for likes enough because I can't even say it. Drop a like on the video if you're enjoying this series. Hopefully the rest of the video is going to go better than this. Let's, let's get into the video. What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode number eight of Win One Take One here with Charlton. We're back everyone and I've got a bit of a curveball for you. Not that I'm much of a baseball player but this man is not the man that I said I was going to possibly look at bringing in but I looked at the comments, I saw everyone saying sign Kevin Phillips and then I thought well let's just have another look. Let's see if there's something I've missed and I've come across Gavin McCann who He's a bit weird, but he ticks two big boxes. He can play centre mid and he can play right mid, albeit he's learning. He's a bit weird because he's got great acceleration and very meh passing. Um, but you can see, looking at his technicals and mentals, I think he's a really good high quality player. And, uh, uh, well, I, I read the comments, right? I did read the comments and I saw the Kevin Phillips argument coming out. People saying, don't get a right midfielder, stick with the diamond uh, and, you know, just get Kevin Phillips to play up top. But the issue with that is, is that I don't have enough centre mids to keep playing a diamond without bringing in more centre mids. I mean, to be honest, even with McCannon, we're still probably light one or two centre mids. So with that all in mind, I felt like if I wanted to really stay with the diamond, I had to get in a centre mid. If I wanted to go, obviously it's back to the 4-4-2, I not needed a right midfielder. And so Phillips just never really fitted in, to be honest. Um, so as a result, McGavin is here. Hopefully he's going to have a debut to remember today. As uh, Well, for the first match, we are going to be taking on Bolton, away from home, a Bolton team who had a pretty good season in real life around this time. This was a Bolton team that, in a couple of seasons' time, under Big Sam, were going to go on to qualify for the Europa League with JJ Akotcha playing for them. Now, unfortunately for us, JJ Akotcha is not currently playing for them in this universe, but they've still got some very, very good players Players like Hendrik Pedersen, perhaps, if I did want to get in another striker. Michael Ricketts is... I mean, Michael Ricketts might be the one. Awful first touch, but he is fast. So there's definitely some quality here on offer. And of course, a 19-year-old Kevin Nolan. If I do want to just continue hoarding centre mids. But yes, with no Kevin Phillips on the cards, we are going to be looking at the likes of Stuart and Yule to start getting goals. And well, to be fair, Yule... He's done okay as of late. He's done better than I expected from him. Hopefully, he's going to be at his best today. And, uh, well, before we get into today's game against Bolton, before I give you a proper squad rundown, it's time to spin the wheel. Wheel. Mr. Wheel. I, I, it's a Mr. Wheel, I've decided. It's a Mr. Let's give it a spin. Let's give it a tug. Where are we landing? We've just landed ourselves on the 20 million. We've landed on this before. Oh my, what does that get us at this Bolton Wanderers side? If we have a look at things here, sorted by value, uh, the answer is anyone, simply because they've not got players worth a great deal. I guess that is because when you compare them to ourselves, we're kind of in similar boats. We're two teams struggling along at the bottom, not the highest rep players. I'm a little bit disappointed that there is no JJ Okocha to get. But um, no, there's some good players here. I think the obvious one to go for would be Michael Ricketts, especially because I did give up the opportunity to sign Kevin Phillips and also he can play out at right attacking mid, so potential right winger. We are going to play the diamond. We are going narrow yet again. McCann comes into the team to make his debut. He's going to play as the deep line playmaker. He has 20 passing, which is something that we don't have a great deal of in the team passing, especially in our midfield. But you can see a really good mental, some good finishing as well, if he wants to get slightly higher up the pitch. Our ball winning midfielder today, Paramati, is injured. So this is our next best ball winning midfielder. Yeah, I'd quite like a new one, really. We've got Andy Todd here, 27 years young. He's very... Mm, he's not He's not very good. I don't know what adjective for Andy. If you've got an adjective for Andy, leave it in the comments. How would you describe this man as a ball-winning midfielder? I mean, I'll be honest, he's not... He's not modern-day Premier League quality. Let's hope he can do a job for us today, though, against a Bolton Wanderers team who, if we just refresh ourselves, uh, currently in the league table, are sat four points behind us. A win today could potentially move us seven points away from the drop with 11 games left of the season. I feel like that has to be what we're aiming towards today. So anyway, let's get the team submitted and let's get into this. Gavin 
You're going to rock the number eight, son. You're going to be fantastic. So yeah, this is a really big game, an opportunity to weaken a rival, similarly to how we did against Sunderland, but this is one of the first times I can recall us playing a team in the relegation zone behind us, which makes this all the more important. We need a result here. And uh, well, straight away, Bolton have a highlight. This is not what I want to see inside the first 10 minutes. Of course, they're at home. They've got a home advantage. That's a thing. And while Pedersen is going to be looking maybe to find Ricketts on the far side, there he is, Powell. With the huge tackle, can we spring a surprise? Stuart, Jason Yule latches onto the end of it. Can he finish it? No, he can't. He's got the rebound, though. Do we want to believe? Do we want... There's a corner. It could still It could still lead to something. Where are we going here, McCann? The new kid on the block. Go short to Stuart. I love that. Mixing it up with the routine. Scotty Parker's there. Smashes it in to the side netting. Free kick for us. Burley, dangerous area, hits it and scores it. Jaskalainen, not covering himself in glory there, should have got a stronger hand to it, certainly did not. Parries it into the roof of the net. And, uh, well, with that, we have the lead, everyone. We have the lead. It's 1-0 up. The diamond, it's doing diamondy things right now. They say diamonds are a girl's best friend. They might be Charlton's best friend after this. I don't want to speak prematurely, but we're 36 minutes in here. They've not had a shot. That's not the best throw in, though. And I guess they could still catch us on the break. We've got to be wary. Marky Fish, where are you going? He gives it to Powell. To Parker. Plays it through to Burley, who's got to finish that and, well, doesn't. Three minutes left of the half. Ricketts throw in to Fox. Ricketts again, the man who I've got my eye on. Fox whipping it in. Rufus gets away to Burley. Could we spring... The trap. Jason Yule takes it down. He looks confident. Where are you going, Jason? We've been here before, and he never scores them. Anytime you see Jason Yule go through like that, and I sound excited, brace yourself for the fact I'm just going to be disappointed shortly after. Well, 1-0 up here at the break. It's been a weird game. There's not been too many highlights. There's not been a great deal of chances, but Bolton, I mean, they've got to do something different. Big Sam has got to change things up here. And, well, a goal for them to start the half, I guess, would be changing things up. If we get a second, maybe we can start to party. Stewart, wide area, tight angle, hits it, side netting. Not surprised. Robert's still in goal for us, by the way. Not forgiven, Kylie. Not after that Arsenal game. If you don't know what Arsenal game I'm talking about, well, then, if you want to see one of the worst goalkeeping performances ever, it happened last episode. It was absolutely awful. But we're here with Young in the wide areas. He whips it to McCann. On his day, you hits it just wide of the post. Didn't hit that with power, did he? 17 finishing, and that was his attempt. That was mm, disappointing. Looking to hit on the counter again here, though. Fox, though, to Nolan. Franson. Every highlight seems to start with them having the ball, and eventually, it's got to be a highlight in their favour. Maybe this is the one. It's whipped in. Pedersen's back post. That was not far wide. We need another. I need, I need the breathing room. They've got a man off the pitch here. Hinchcliffe is off. We've got to make the advantage count. Gets lumped forward. Is Wallace going to get there? No. Young's going to get there. Roberts, what can you do? Just don't do a Kylie. That's perfect. More of that. Jason Yule, he's through again. I'm feeling optimistic. Is it going to be a goal this time? It actually is. I don't Adam and Eve it. I can't believe it's happened. We're 2-0 up, and we absolutely deserve that. We have been dominant in this game. I thought when I saw the team's lineup and I saw they were playing a 4-2-3-1, I wondered if our wing-backs might be getting a little exposed here. But they've created absolutely nothing. They have lacked a spark in this team. And a win here could start to put us in a really, really good position, especially because Fulham are also losing... We could be about to go seven points clear of the drop and adding a new man to our ranks. And I think we all know the man that we're going to be adding. Stuart, Yule. Oh my word, what a save by Jaskalainen. I'll tell you what, if he was at fault for the first goal, he can be forgiven now, I think, because that looked like a certain goal. Might have a bit more to do here. No short corner on this occasion, but well, unfortunately for us, the header is going to go over. I've just realised there's eight minutes left. I've not made any subs. I've just been enjoying watching the match. You know, it's some, sometimes this happens in football managers. Sometimes you get caught in the moment. I'll tell you what, if they score now, then I'm going to panic. 
No, no need to panic, right? Jack changes. Nothing crazy here. McCann off for Gascoigne. Salako on for Stewart. And one more. Paramati, come on for Todd, a defensive midfielder. Give him five minutes to get his fitness levels back. So we're going to try and get it forward. It's Jason Yule again. Jason Yule is everywhere. Gascoigne on the volley. I really thought he was going to score another banger. He scored one similar to that, obviously, last time out against Sunderland. That was not far wide. Is there time for a third? I don't feel like they're even going to get one back here. I'm feeling good. Salako, though, gives away the ball. Wallace. He's going to look to switch it to Fox, who could get in behind here. No, Roberts reads it well. Carly would have never done that. He would have ballsed it up completely. Salako, with his one jumping reach, has not even attempted to jump then. I guess if a player has one jumping reach, they just physically can't jump. It's like the gravity's turned up. But do you need to be able to jump when you can run like this and dink it like this? I don't think you do. John Salako, take a bow. 3-0 against Bolton. The away fans, they're loving it. All 10 of them in the corner there. Oh. I'm really starting to believe now we can stay up. Although, Chelsea are up next. We could still lose a pretty important piece to the, to the Charlton puzzle. But right now, I'm feeling good. And with that, I, f I think it's 3-0, everyone. I think that is how we are going to finish here. A good performance against a relegation rival. Um, Young has just shoved over Pedersen. Completely unnecessary. No time left. He's just shoved him in the bank, pushed him over. Completely respect it. Good, good move. Get in their heads. Bardness. Fish gets it away. I'll tell you what, Marky Fish. What a redemption story. From player who I didn't really like to someone who I'm now just super fond of. He defends superbly. Who needs to run? Oh, love that, lads. Love that from you. And the Football Ramble are interviewing us. I, I feel like the Football Ramble didn't exist as a podcast, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Could be wrong. Let, let me know. What I do know is we are now clear of the drop quite significantly as well. We're looking at the teams ahead of us. I mean, could we sneak into the Europa League? Let's not get silly. Let's, let's be realistic here. We want to try and get as far up this league as we can. I mean, our goal difference doesn't look too bad. McCann's made a debut and played well. And best of all, we get a new player. Bolton, you already know who I'm coming for. Apparently Gardner's their key player. Is Gardner any good? Uh, no, I don't like him. I don't like him. I know who I do like, though. Michael Ricketts. Look at his pace. 20 and a natural born leader and he's busting a move in his pitch i can do that move too can you see the can you see the resemblance i can see the resemblance uh right let, let's sign this man move to my club michael ricketts welcome to charlton my friend he will be playing in our next game it is in eight days at home against chelsea in sixth i mean if we're looking at the europa league this is one we need to win to keep the European dream alive. I'm getting carried away here. This is silly. It's going to be tough. We've got Ricketts, though. Hopefully, he's going to turn on the heat. Let's go and see if we can give Chelsea a good game, shall we? Okay, guys, we are back here for game number two against Chelsea. And after a run of difficult games, this is the last game against one of the huge teams kind of of this era, I feel like. This is our last chance, really, to get like a super iconic player. You look through this Chelsea team and whilst, you know, we have got Spurs to play and each team in its own right, I feel like has icons at the time. This really is a team full of lots of little superstars. I wouldn't mind a Zola. I wouldn't mind a Hasselbank. Maybe even a 23-year-old Frank Lampard who actually, now I look at him, is a little disappointing. Ultimately, however, the value of these players isn't particularly cheap and whilst the wheel has been pretty nice to us throughout, um... There is no guarantee of that today, nor is there a guarantee we're going to win, even if we do spin a big number. Um, let's get into this, shall we? Let's give the wheel a spin. It would be, I feel like, a missed opportunity if we didn't get one huge player here. We just landed on the 200 million. How should I feel? The wheel is being very, very kind. And with that in mind, um, we can have anyone. Which is a, it's a turn up for the books. There's lots on the line. As I joked about earlier, although there is a hint of seriousness there a win here we could be hunting down chelsea for europa league spots that would be cool um probably not realistic ultimately we're still looking over our shoulders a little bit but we could certainly climb up the league a little bit certainly bolster our squad a little and i'd like to add 
any little player that I can. So let's get into this, shall we? In terms of the team, no changes in the kind of outfield department other than, of course, Ricketts coming into the team. He's going to lead the line. He's going to be our advance forward with Stewart to his left. The rest of the team, though, I'm going to leave untouched. I thought we played really well against Bolton, especially defensively. Todd did his job, and compared to Parimatti, who's been a bit of a donkey, I feel like, at defensive midfielder, I just feel like Todd's our man. He's, he's earned my trust. I'm hoping he's not going to let me down. And Ricketts, we're going to give him the number 11. For those of you really serious about squad numbering, I know there's a hardcore contingent of FM players out there for who squad numbering is the most serious thing. I know you've just, you've just fist bumped a little bit because a strike has been given the number 11 shirt in a Work the Space video. This never happens. It's been a quiet opening to the game, 12 minutes, and we've not seen anything, but we've got a goal kick. Could we build something from the back? It's going to be Young at right back here to Rufus. Young, Rufus, to Roberts. I mean, if we take the lead, I might, I might hop on the pitch. Also, I did praise Marky Fisher earlier, didn't I? That's a dangerous game. In Football Manager, never openly praise a player. It will go wrong. Ricketts, though, 20 pace. Zero finishing from the looks of things. He hits it straight at Kudicini, who parries it out for a corner. And well, the, the debutante, the new kid on the block, not a finish to remember there. And we're not going to make anything of the corner either, sadly. I don't want to dwell on things too much, but this half has not had any chances in it, really. I say that. There's two minutes and a highlight begins. That chance that we missed for Ricketts is the only opportunity, really, in a game that's been a little bogged down in the midfield. John Terry clears it away, but Marky Fish, he's on it like a car bonnet, and he's bringing it forward to Powell, who plays it forward. Terry gets it away again, though, and well, we look a bit keen to commit men forward into the attack. It could leave us open at the back here, as they are going to bring the football forward on this near side, but McCann, he's hunting them down. Unfortunately, he might be not hunting them down enough, because Gronkyar, Gron Gronkyar? I don't. That's the A N N E connected is not a letter in the English language. So how am I meant to know? I can't even read English. Everyone, we'll go with Gronkyar. I know there's going to be someone very upset that I'm not familiar with this player. He's just scored against us. With their, I think that might be their first shot of the game. It's certainly their first highlight of the game. They've done nothing, and then a moment of quality has made the difference. Oh my word! Petit goes through the back of Todd. 70 seconds left of the heart. Burley's going to be over this. Can he score two free kicks in two? No, but I did really believe just for a moment. <laughs> okay, so at the break, it is 1-0 to Chelsea. That one opportunity right at the end of the half really was a bit of a sucker punch. It came completely against the run of play. I'm going to tell the players that I'm far from pleased, although defensively, I think we've actually been okay. Stewart's picked up a knock, so with that in mind, we're going to take him off and bring in Jason Yule. I'm going to move Ricketts to pressing forward, I think just because he's got a really good work rate, and obviously that's that's pretty important for the role, and his pace should allow him to chase down the ball. Um, the only downside is, as a pressing forward, he's not going to dribble with the ball as much, although, if I'm not mistaken, we can tell him to dribble a little bit more. He's got 17 dribbling. Make the most of it, Ricketts. He is the man who had our only real proper highlight of the half. We need to be better finishing-wise. Could we get an early goal to make things interesting? Powell in the wide area. Options in the middle. Desai, huge tackle. But, well, I thought the ball might still end up in the box, but they've put in another. And now it's Chelsea on the counter-attack. Stanich bringing the ball forward on the far side. Options queuing up in the middle. That tackle is subpar. And Zola's there. It's blocked once. It's blocked twice. Scotty Parker, get it away from Danger Son. I mean, with that chance they just had there with Zola, their XG has jumped up massively. But we've had more chances. All it takes is one. Could this be the one? Young, Parker, Burley, is he fouled by the keeper? Andre Marin is giving it. He's going to VAR. The tension is tense. I'm wearing my suit. I've got my hands in my pockets. I'm panicking. I think this has got to be given. I think Kudicini has just hacked down Burley here. Am I right thinking Burley missed a penalty recently? I think he did. Can I change? I don't think I updated the penalty taker. If he takes it and misses it again, I'm going to cry. I can change it. You know what, Ricketts, this is your moment. 17 finishing, 14 penalties. He was born to do this. He was born to kick a ball from this spot. Do it on your debut, lad. He missed one opportunity. Is he going to score this? I mean, was there ever... A, there was a little bit of a doubt. I was going to say, was there ever a doubt? There definitely was. He's found the back of the net. 
He smashed it. The keeper's not moved. He very nearly didn't need to move. But he's just kind of hit the ball so hard there that the keeper's just not reacted. Right. 1-1. One, one. I mean, the short corner's on here. Ricketts to McCann. The two new boys linking up. It's whipped back post. Marky Fish. I thought that had gone in. He's rippled the side netting. Burley's been poor at centre attack in mid today. I don't have a plan B other than maybe dropping Jason Yule back. So you know what? We'll drop Jason Yule back and we'll bring in Johansson. I'll tell you what, between Johansson and Ricketts, we've got a pacey front line. I mean, you can t <laughs> he's a bit of an upgrade, isn't he, Ricketts? I didn't realise how much better he is than Johansson. Also, Todd on a booking scares me. Paramatti. Last change. Let's make sure we keep 11 men here. We have 10 minutes left of this game to try and steal away a player. Powell, big ball forward. It's cleared away, but only as far as Scotty Parker. There could be options here. Young, inside to McCann. If he can't do it, well, no one can. Powell, Ricketts, options. McCann just keeps finding himself free. Paramatti on off the bench. Can he become prime Perlo? Ricketts, Johansson. Oh my word, could Achini saves it. It's a huge stop. Johansson's effort was a little bit tame when it came to the power department, but it was a great save. Look, okay, there's, there's two and a half minutes left here, and I might live to regret this, but as I said, this is our last chance to get maybe a proper big-time player. So with that in mind, I'm going on the offensive. We're, we're not as in I'm going to be offensive, as in we're going to go on the attack. That's what I'm trying to say. I want a goal. We're going for it. And a highlight begins right away. Is this going to be genius, or is this going to be the dumbest thing I've ever done? I want to believe it will be the former. Rufus to Petit. Bolo Zenden there. That's a name I've not thought about in a long time. He's bringing it forward on this near side. Petit is running the show in the centre. Fazola and Hasselbank linking up. Chameau here to Petit. I mean, we need to try and stop this ball going in. We could win it here. Jason Yule. It's a two on two at the back. It's a three on three at the back. Jason. Jason. I remember what I said last game. There's still another highlight. There's 120 seconds. It could all change. Get your head out of the microphone, Jack. Stop sulking. Scotty Parker. He wants magic. He wants to make something happen. Young on the overlap. Kicks it straight at Zenden, who now has a lot of space. I mean... I don't know how I should feel. It's a great tackle. It's a great tackle. Oh, I mean, Parker's decided that you know what? If we're not going to get a player, he's just going to scissor tackle someone and it's going to be the last action of the game. It's a straight red, so we are going to be without him. We don't lose anyone. We don't gain anyone. That does feel like a little bit of a missed opportunity, but we've come back from behind to salvage a draw and that's pretty good, right? I'll tell you what I'd like us to do. If you've got to the end of the video, to prove that you've got to the end of the video, I want you to leave which player you would have taken from Chelsea. That way, if someone scrolls midway through the video to the comment section, they're going to think we beat Chelsea. Take your pick from all the players here. Who would you have got? Anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up today's episode from me. Not the greatest in terms of results, but we'll go again tomorrow. Uh, in terms of the longer term implications with this save game, um, the plan is to obviously try and avoid the drop. It's not done by any means just yet. But at the end of the year, with the team that we've assembled, we're going to holiday forward a year and see how my Charlton team that I end up with actually performs over a whole season, um, which I think will be kind of interesting to see how it plays out. Of course, plenty of games still to be played, and whilst you could easily look at the league table and say, you look safe now, nothing is for certain in Football Manager. Um, and equally, I want Europa League football now. That's, that's the aim. We want to finish as high as we can. I might be getting a bit carried away here with the Europa League football thing, but I'm sticking with it. We're going for European football. It's going to be fantastic. Hopefully, I will see you guys again for the next episode where we're going to continue on with this march. Let me know the Chelsea player that you want me to pick down below. I can't actually pick them. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys again next time. Take care. <laughs>